Um, Lizzie, if that's you, can you um, can you hear me? Hi, TT. <laughs> Can you can you hear me? Hello, Lee. I hope you can all hear me. I'm having to do this on my phone because my uh my laptop doesn't like me very much at the moment. Oh, fantastic! You can all hear me. Right. I have no idea of the time uh, because it doesn't show me anything. So if somebody wants to let me know when we reach seven o'clock and, um, and then I can get started. Fantastic. I hope everybody's doing well. This is really strange. I've never done anything like this before. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm quite nervous, um, but I hope it's gonna go. Um, I hope it's gonna go well fantastic it'd be great to know where everybody's from um, because we are quite a diverse group about 30 seconds off 7 p.m. fantastic Sweden Sandra hello welcome it's very nice um, Thank you, Titi. I hope so. Hi from Quebec. And Kansas, Sharon, Cheryl, sorry. Anne. Well, thank you all for being here today. It's fantastic. Oh, yes, sorry. I'm, I'm having messages from, from Liz at the bottom as well, which is really helpful. Um, okay. Um, well, it's 7 p.m. now. Hello, Lee from Indiana. Um, so let's um, let's get this started. So um, I'll tell you a, a little bit briefly about me. Um, Crystal, your video won't play. Um, I'm rubbish with technology. I've, I've had to to use my phone because my laptop my laptop won't um, won't let me do it, but I know that um, I think this is being recorded. So even if you can't catch it now, um, you'll be able to see it later. So I, I hope you're able to at least hear that. If you can't hear the, if you can't um, see the video, um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Zeba. Um, I I'm French. Um, I moved to the UK about 25 years ago. Um, and um, to go to university, and then I just ended up loving the people, the country. I love being a, a foreigner here, um, so I will. Um, I decided to to stay. I then met my ex, now ex husband. Um, we moved to the UAE for a while, which is where I first picked up a sewing machine. I just. Um, I remember that when I was little, uh, my mom is from Senegal in West Africa and she, she raised me um, in Paris and um, she would ship me off to my, my, my grandparents every, every holiday, um, probably to just be able to recoup herself. And what, what happens in Senegal where we lived is that there were street sewers, so they would open up their shops in the morning and they would kind of like wheel their machines out and they would sew. And I always loved it because they had those old fashioned singer machine with the, the push pedals. Um, and um, for some reason, when I when I got to Dubai, I just suddenly decided that I'd wanted to to start sewing. Um, very difficult at that time to find somebody to help me. There wasn't anything on Facebook or anything like that. Um, so I think I made two or three cushions, and that was it. And then uh, I moved back to the UK, um, moved to where I am now, which is in Buckinghamshire, with my children and my partner Richard, and. Um, so an ad on Facebook one day, somebody locally offering 12 weeks of sewing lessons. So I just signed up, uh, made a skirt and then realized that there was a fabric shop near me. And that was it. That was the end of any savings I might have had. And they did a, a course on how to make the NCW. Absolutely loved it. That was it. I was hooked on bag making and the rest is really um, the really history. Um, so that's my that's my little story. Um, I love working with cork and with um yes bedfordshire not very far um i love working with cork 
and I love working with wax canvas. Uh, my partner Richard laughs that I love working with Cork because of my name. My name, my name is Zaba, but it comes from a um, South, South American tree called Saba, which is a sacred tree in Venezuela, which my parents uh, named me after because they were big hippies. Um, and so yeah, so cork felt I was all, it, automatically attracted to um, to sewing with cork, and um, and wax canvas came a little bit later. Just for full disclosure, everything I know about sewing with cork, absolutely everything I know, I have learned through uh, an amazing designer called Sonar, uh, Nicole Niels. She is fantastic, and it's watching seeing one of her uh, cork NCWs completely made of cork. Everything is made of cork. Um, I found that on Instagram a few years ago, and that was it. I, I decided that's what I wanted to work with. Um, if anybody is interested, I get my cork in the UK from um, Tanya Fabric. She gets it straight from Portugal. It's absolutely fantastic, um, fantastic quality. I don't know if you can see behind me, but that little basket there has all of uh, my cork. And every time she brings some out, I, I just have to go and get it. And I've got some bigger ones um, here. Those I kind of bought um, bigger quantities of it because I use them a little bit more. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming everybody knows about cork, but basically it's made from the harvested bark of trees. It's a, it's a, an ethical um, resource, resource. Sorry, it is um, sustainable. It is environmentally friendly, and it is vegan. I'm just checking on my notes so that I'm not making any mistake. Well, I know that Tanya's most certainly is. So that's kind of like um, what Tanya, uh, what Tanya has, and then. Um, Later on in, my, in the process, I discovered um, wax canvas and I what I love the most about it is it's how rugged and how well it ages. Um, and, and, and I love the feel of it, which is quite strange because some people don't actually like this, this sort of, um, it's not gummy, but it leaves a little wax, I guess, on your, on your hands. I actually really, really like that feeling. And as, as I've, I carry um, a, a, a wax canvas and cork bag on, my, on, on a day-to-day -day basis, and after a while, the wax has actually uh, worn off a little bit, and it just gives the fabric a beautiful, beautiful sort of a, a, a matte, I'm going to say sheen, but it's the wrong word, it's the exact opposite, it's quite, uh, not dull, but matte, it, it's, um, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say, it, it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful texture, and it's very soft. So, uh, and I, in the UK, where I am, I get my waxed canvas from Merchant and Mills, and it, the quality is absolutely fantastic. They do these, um, they do these fantastic little, um, uh, uh, sample packs that you can get which is brilliant because you can see all the colors and you can see the differences of the different waxes so there's two different wax there's the dry oil and then there is the uh, oil skin I work uh, mostly I think pretty much exclusively with the oil skin which is the heavier one um, it's uh, it's seven seven ounces which is 200 oh no sorry sorry it's 14 ounces which is about 400 grams per meter it's really thick and it's the one when you when you work with it that will um let's see if i've got it there in the yeah when you when you work with it and you scrunch it it just leaves those beautiful beautiful marks i don't know if you can see them whereas the dry oil skin is a bit lighter it's lovely as well but when you crunch it it doesn't really leave you any marks it just leaves you the fold so it's a matter of preference but it's worth ordering some samples just to see which one you uh, which one you prefer um what else do i need to talk about um i think that's that's about it unless anybody has any questions about what the two fabrics are No, I think there's a little bit of a, 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 a lag between the uh, between me talking and um, and questions coming through. Okay, well, I'll keep an eye on the on the comments in the meantime. So, for today, I am showing you how I would do um, uh, Mrs. H's sling ring using uh, wax canvas and cork. I'm not going to be 
doing a lot of, um, uh, sorry, I'm not going to be doing the lining at all um, um, because that's just normal plain cotton and, and I'm sure everybody knows how to do that bit. So I'm just going to be talking about the exterior of the bag. Um, so if you just bear with me, I'm just going to get some of the stuff that is behind me. So one of the questions that came up in the in the group that I saw um, is about interfacing. And that's one of the first questions that people ask. Now, I I don't interface um, either. I don't interface the wax canvas. I don't interface the cork. Merchant Miller actually say on their website not to interface their wax canvas. It's thick enough and it has this beautiful structure to itself that it doesn't need anything else. And it's waterproof. So you, you really, really don't need to, um, you don't need to, um, to interface it. So I've done the exterior of, no, sorry. Yes, I've done, sorry. That's the one that I've, I've made. That's one I made earlier. So I decided to do the, the top part of the ring sling in wax canvas and the bottom part in, um, in cork. And I actually even cheated a little bit because I didn't want to use all of my wax canvas. So where the pocket is going to be, I just used normal, um, normal fabric, which I, I then interface. But if you see the, the back of the wax canvas is not, um, is not interfaced at all. It, it simply really doesn't need it. If a pattern calls for um, a fusible fleece, I always put it on the lining. So I make sure that I use really good quality interfacing on my lining. So I tend to use G700 because I find that it's the only one that doesn't wrinkle when you then apply the fusible fleece. Sometimes I saw with other ones that um, once I've, I've um, the glue of the fusible fleece just makes the, makes the, um, the lining fabric kind of like undulate a little bit. So um, I, I, yeah, I, I attach the fusible fleece to my lining always and it's never seemed to um, affect the structure um, the structure of the bag um, so that's what when I finish this one that's what I'm going to do I'm going to attach the fusible fleece to the lining but not to the exterior of the bag same goes for um, the um, the cork I wouldn't interface um, cork also you're not really supposed to apply heat to any of them wax for obvious reason because the, the wax will will just melt off um, and cork because the backing of the cork is is um, is glued on so it will affect the longevity of it and it can actually make your cork um, crack having said that I probably shouldn't say it but when I make a mistake I try not to but when I make a mistake on on my sewing with cork and I have to unpick I do kind of hold my iron over it with a little bit of heat and that kind of expands the cork again and all the little holes disappear, which is, um, which is exactly what I want to do. Um, so that's for the, um, the interfacing. And then if you need to add foam, it's exactly the same. You can just um, uh, either spray baste it to um, the lining or to the exterior of the, um, of the, of the bag, so the cork or the wax canvas, or you can um, baste it with the uh, with the stitches uh, within the seam allowance. <sighs> I need to catch my breath. <laughs> I'm still really nervous. So uh, some some tips about um, sewing with both. One of the the, the biggest thing about and, and I'm going to talk about wax canvas now um, is there is very little room for error with wax canvas. If you punctuate, punctuate your, I did one earlier, but I don't know where I've put it. If you accidentally uh, uh, make a, a stitch line where it shouldn't be um, with the wax canvas, it will, it won't go away. It will always show because the, the needle is just pierced through the, the canvas and is pierced through the wax. It's not really the end of the world because it will disappear with all the different folds that you've got in the bag, but be very mindful of that. Um, th there is very, very, very little room for error. So obviously no pins um, for wax canvas. Um, and the same applies for, uh, for cork, although it, it is a tiny bit more forgiving. Um, so when I have to attach anything for either of them, I use um, these little clips, these little clips here. And they're perfect, they're really, really good. So, 
in order to get to this stage, which is uh, half of the exterior um, of the ring sling, I've got to create the exterior pocket, which is that that's the cork here and that's the lining, the exterior lining. Um, and as you see, I've just, I'm just pinning them together without pins. I'm, I'm attaching them together with, uh, with just the clips. But when we go to the, um, the sewing machine, I'll show you how I do that. Um, I think that's it for this stage. Yes, in terms of needles, that was it. Um, I, you, you might want to use a bigger needle. So I tend to use, uh, the, well, it's recommended to use a, 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 is it 1490 or 1940, 9040, uh, jeans type needle. Uh, my machine gets away with an 80, um, but she's, I mean, I put it through a lot and, and she's really good. I use a domestic, by the way, for most of my bags. Um, it's a Janome, um, Atelier 7. Um, I will use my walking foot with it. I've got, um, I have a, an industrial, but I don't use it as much yet because it's basically still scaring the pants out of me a little bit. So it, you can use cork and you can use wax canvas with, um, with a domestic machine. Just make sure you've got the right feet. Um, so I would recommend, um, uh, my, my preference is a walking foot. Um, because you, you know that your fabric will stay exactly where it's supposed to go. Um, there won't be any kind of like uh, feed dog marks on it. Um, and it can deal with any of the, the bulkier areas. Um, Teflon footwork as well. And actually I wanted to show you something. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I thought it'd be a good way to show you the differences. So I top stitched um, the, po the exterior pocket. This, um, I top stitched cork at four and anything else at three and a half uh, but I think that the, the bigger the stitch the nicer it is so I don't know I hope you can see this but this is a size four stitching with the walking foot with a little bit of uh, a bulkiness so you've got your cork folded over the lining folded over and the backing and um, and you can see that my stitching is not very wide this here is where is it this here is with the walking foot i don't know how you can see it with the walking foot um with a size four so you can see that it's a lot neater i think anyway it's a lot neater and um and you can really see the, the stitching very well does the wax of wax affect the need no it doesn't um i i've not found it to be gumming the needle at all um i I do use my needles probably a lot more than I should. I clean my machine between every project, but I don't always change my needle. My needle is never gunked up. The only thing that sometimes can happen if I'm doing too much, if I'm sewing too much um, wax canvas, so say I'm doing four bags in wax canvas, is that my feed dogs will, um, will get a little bit of the wax residue. So I've got an old toothbrush that I use and I just brush them clean um, and that's, um, and that's about it. I've never had any uh, any other problems with um, with using wax canvas. Um, but I think it's also a bit of a testament to the quality of the of the canvas. It's, it's really, really, really nice quality. And also, th actually, that makes me that makes me think another reason, for example, that you wouldn't use um, you you don't need to use interfacing is that good quality wax canvas will not leak through. It, that there is no transfer of any residue apart from obviously the feed dogs because they're grating against it but it, 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 it doesn't transfer any residue or leaks onto fabric or anything like that so you don't have to worry about um about any of those things right if you just bear with me i'm just going to grab a have you tried doing your own yes i have just bear with me one second i have tried doing my own um sorry There is a great um, tutorial. Oh, I think it's no, it's on YouTube. I think it's Blue Color, um, and she shows you exactly how to do it. So I did two types. I did um, the one for fabric. So I waxed fabric. Now I made a mistake because I bought really heavy canvas, which I then tried to wax, and it's so rich. I mean, 
I can't make a bag out of it because I don't have the strength to actually manipulate it. I've got I've got issues with my wrists. And waxed um, fabric is using uh, beeswax and uh, paraffin, petroleum. Um, so you can make your own, and you just you just have to kind of like um, I think it, I covered a table with lots of towels, and uh, I bought a crock pot, melted everything, used a big old paintbrush, painted the lot used a teflon sheet which i use also for my ironing sorry hold on let me show you but you can use one of those but then you have to throw it away which is a teflon sheet or you can use a a, a baking sheet um sorry let me close this you can use a baking sheet as well and you then iron you then iron that um uh that you apply the the wax the, the, the wax and paraffin mixture, you put a protector on it and you iron that and then you let that dry and you end up with basically wax fabric. That was one and I also made uh, the kind of um, wax uh, food uh, covers um, and for those you've got to just use um, beeswax and some oil, I can't remember if it was eucalyptus oil or something like that which acts as an antibacterial but you can, you can definitely make your own. Um, Thank you. I do love the cork. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, um, could you give us an estimate of cost per meter, uh, Margaret? I I I'm not sure if you're asking me for cork or for um, wax canvas. But in the UK, I don't know about in America. But in the UK, um, the wax canvas is about twenty two pounds a meter, and the cork is 11 pounds per fat quarter but they're big fat quarters they're like 50 centimeters by 70 centimeters it's not cheap there is no there's no way around it they're not um they're not cheap fabrics um uh, but they're they are such a pleasure such a pleasure to use um and and you can always if you don't want to make a whole thing with it you can just you know use them as accents um for for bags or accessories and they work really well um, a place in America that people can also look at where I, I know they sell both again I don't know their prices but I've heard about them is Fabric Funhouse and I think they do both um, ethically sourced um, uh, wax canvas and, um, and cork I hope I have answered all the questions yeah Okay, so um, I will, in that case, I'll take you guys to the sewing machine. Yes, Liz, that's why I use two fabrics uh, for the outer bit because the, the bottom part, nobody's ever going to see, sorry, nobody's ever going to see the bottom part of this pocket except me, but I've just saved myself all of that wax canvas so yeah I was quite I was quite happy about that um right so if you bear with me I'm just gonna take you guys to the sewing machine and um just show you how I would sew this bit and then at the end I will um I will show you how I do um, the straps. Now for the straps my favorite is to use uh, webbing because I love the feel of it. Um, to use webbing and create an accent with the wax canvas. I personally don't like cork straps only because I made myself a bag which I love but with cork straps and they slip off my coat in the winter and it annoyed me so much that um, I ended up having to buy things that you could kind of like sew under so that it would have a grip on my coat and it just annoyed me too much. So from that moment on, I don't, I decided I, I'm not gonna do um, cork straps. They look gorgeous um, and it might just be my coat, but I, I personally like my bag to stay on my shoulder. So, Webbing for me works with um, with wax canvas, and if you wanted to do a, a strap with cork, you could use exactly the same technique, and maybe just put fabric underneath the cork on on the on the part that will um, 
that will touch your shoulder. Hi, Deb. Welcome. Right. Uh, so you're just going to have to bear with me because I need to move everything. I hope you don't get seasick. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. And that's all because my computer refuses to work. I am back. Sorry about that. Right. Oh, I didn't even show you my, I'll have to show them to you later, my stash of wax canvas and, and well, cork, you can see it. That's my stash of cork right there. So you can get loads and loads of different things. You got the, um, you get plain cork, just a plain colour, and they will all have um, some kind of lining on them. I hope you can see it. They've all got some lining on them there. Um, you can get decorated one. You can get, oh, is it this one? I love this one. I hope you can see it. This one is completely shimmery. Um, you can get Leaves. I love leaves. I uh, one of my favorite is this one because it really does look like the bark of a tree. And I've got that one in two colors. So there is an enormous, enormous amount of choice, and that's the width. If you notice, if I push them all down, that's the width of the um, the fabric, and then you decide whether you want a fat quarter or two or a meter, etc., etc. One thing I didn't mention. I'll mention it now. I'll sit down. Okay. You might not want to be that close to me. Is how I um, is how I mark my fabric when I'm going to cut my pattern. Yeah, cork is gorgeous. Thank you for the uh, the quilting. It's it's my it's my new thing at the moment. I, I'm I'm loving quilting. Um, when I when I'm going to cut my fabric, how how I cut my fabric, um, bear with me a second. There you go. I've got wax canvas here, and I've got this is what I tend to use. So say I'm um, let's start with cork. I'm making. A bag or an ex well, an accessory and is going to have raw edges so when the ed where the edges are visible they're not going to be they're not the edges are not going to be turned turned over so when I have to draw out my pattern and and the there's going to be raw edges I tend to use a pencil because it fades away you can use also uh, friction pens friction pens also work but I, I tend to I'm terrified of using pens in the office because I also have permanent markers and things like that. So I tend to use a pencil because it will mark. I hope you can see it. It will mark, but it will also fade away. So that's quite good. And it erases, but I don't know where my eraser is. Um, if it's not going to be visible, like for example, this is going to be my seam for the top of the pocket. I just used a biro pen because nobody's going to see it. And I just wanted to make sure that I got my, oops, can you see it? There you go. I wanted to make sure I got my angle right. For wax canvas, um, you can, um, my preference is this, <laughs> that's just me. I've got this old um, Soline, uh, is it chalk pen, I think it's called. And it's rubbish because every time I try and use it, the chalk breaks and it annoys me. But the end of it is really nice and thin and it marks really well on my, can on my canvas. So I use that to trace. Um, when I'm when I'm using wax canvas, or I've got this, which is a it's a seam flattener. So anything that's a bit pointy, basically, and you can use it to 
to mark stuff. So that's what I, I forgot to cover that bit. So let's turn this one on. Right, so I sew, um, I, 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 I'll, I'll sew them like I would sew basically anything else, except, yeah, my needle, I think, at the moment is an 80, and, um, and I've got my, um, my walking foot. Uh, I, I've got my walking foot, I don't know if you can see it, attached. Um, I don't know if it's a testament to how much I sew with walking foot, but I'm on my third one, and they're not supposed to break, but I do, I do put this machine through, um, through a lot. So now I'm doing the, the external pocket. So I've got um, an interfaced cotton and, um, and my cork, which is going to make the, um, the outside pocket of the exterior of the bag. I'll try and do this quite quickly. So I sew it up normally. Now, the pattern here would call for um, flipping the two sides and ironing them. Obviously, we want to avoid that as much as we can with cork. I feel like you're very low. We want to avoid that as much as we possibly can with cork. So the technique that works best is, where are my scissors? So I hope you can all see, sorry, it's a bit crammed here. So I'm gonna snip the curve like the pattern calls for. Here. This. There you go, so I've snipped that. Normally I would flip this and I would iron it. I can't do that because I've got cork. So one of the great things that you can use is the quarter inch um, double sided tape. I can find it. And that's brilliant at holding your seams flat when you need to um, flip cork or you need to top stitch cork. Another brilliant thing that you should really invest in, especially if you're going to be working with wax canvas, is fabric tack. Let me show you. It's this. Now this, I buy it by the gallon. Um, it's, it's absolutely brilliant at holding fabric together and it doesn't smear, it doesn't leave a stain. It's quite quick uh, drying, which is really useful. And more importantly, if you're gonna be working with um, wax canvas, you, you can't pin it in place. Uh, the double-sided sticky tape doesn't work at all uh, because of the wax but this works and this is absolutely brilliant so that's what I use all the time when I'm sewing anything with wax canvas to hold it in place so you'll see when I'm doing the the strap um, the fabric fabric tack is absolutely fantastic very very useful very useful to have um, right so now I'm gonna remove the other side of the other side of double sided tape. Et voilà. Hopla. Okay. And then I'm going to just start. I'm, I've got really rubbish hands and they're not helping me at all. So I've got a funny way of doing it. But I'm just going to flip. I hope you can see. I'm just going to flip it over and push it down flat. 
and you see how it holds it it doesn't it doesn't come back up and i'm going to do the same on the other side and this side has stayed nice and flat and once i've done that i can turn this and i can start rolling it with my fingers uh, where am I? and i can pin it and if I used the Fabri-Tac, Fabri -Tac, it would be exactly the um, same, except you've got to wait for it to dry just a little bit, but not, not too long. What type of thread am I using? Uh, Gutemann. Uh, I use, uh, for all of the bags, I use Gutemann thread, um, whichever machine I'm using. There's the normal one. It's, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Lots of colour choices and... Um, and it's sturdy. I've not had a bag ripped through yet. I hope I'm not missing any questions. Um, there we go. So now, although obviously I can't iron it or I shouldn't iron it, it's nice and flat and I can top stitch it, which I'm gonna do now. Um, what I tend to do when it comes to top stitching is really um, dependent on how confident I am with the pattern, how often I've done it, um, and also whether it's for me or not. So if I'm not very confident, um, whether it's wax canvas or cork, I will try and blend the, the, the thread to the fabric that I'm using. Um, and if I'm super confident, I will systematically use a contrast because it's beautiful to have a, a contrast thread on either wax canvas or on, on cork. I think it's lovely. But I've not made this pattern before, I'm afraid. So <laughs> I, I just want to be safe um, in case I make a mistake. So I'm just going to match my top, uh, my top thread, although it will be a little bit paler so you'll be able to see it. So as I said, when it comes to top stitching with cork, I always set mine on a four for cork and then I line it up to the one eighth then off she goes There you go. So I hope you can see it. I don't know if you can. I hope you can. That's it. Top stitch. And it was nicely held in place inside with the, um, with the double-sided tape. So now, if I remember my steps, I... Let me just double check what the next step is. Um, top stitch to top of the edge of that. Place the exterior on top of one of the exterior, aligning the bottom and the edges based in place. Okay. So. To find my middle. If I need to mark my middle. There we go. So I'm going to align these. And my centers are matching. I don't know if you can see it. My centers are matching, which is nice. This one is a bit too lazy. Okay. So I'm able to pin everything together or clip everything together with the awesome one with this. Just 
checking if see if there's any questions. No. Okay, so now uh, place the exterior D on top of the exterior lining edges and bottom base into place. So I'm going to base that on a five. There we go. I'll see if I can zoom in to show you the feed dogs, but so far so good, there's nothing on them. Oh, actually, just before, just to show you why a walking foot is really useful. This is, I hope you can see, this is the, the, the thickness that it's got to, it's got to go through. So it's two layers of cork, two layers of cotton, and at this stage, one layer of wax canvas, but it's gonna be two layers, so it's quite a lot. So a walking foot for this is, is actually quite essential. Right, let's get you. Sorry, when I base, I do like to get them all basted in the same direction. Because um, I'm always scared that they're going to shift and the pockets will be lopsided. have any questions uh, just pop them down uh, contrast yeah I think it looks really nice to use the contrast fabric um, yeah there we go. just lower that and go back here now we've got to do the central um is there a reason you don't pivot your needle oh um just then only because i the, the reason why I, I i cut my thread and started again is it's happened to me before when i've tried to um to base something in place especially something this big where i would go around and pivot my needle and carry on and then work finally get to this end and the fabric will have shifted up on the side that I finish on. Um, and it's probably just, you know, operator error. It's it's my mistake. So it's easier for me to go, to start from the same point when it comes to the, the, the top edges of pockets. So on this side, I'll start on, on, on one side, I'll start where the pocket is and I'll go down and then I'll stop and I'll do exactly the same on the other side because I know that those two are leveled at that stage, this one and this one, and they just won't move. So that's why I tend to, uh, I tend to base like that. That's just, that's just me because I've had a, I've had a few accidents and I hate unpicking. Um, so now we're going to do the um, central, central partition on the pocket. Let me just grab a ruler. <clears throat> so I hope you can still see. There it is. Um, what can I use? Yeah, 
can just use that. So I've used some uh, a pencil, but you can use uh, an erasable pen. You can use even um, Hera, Hera markers. They work. But it will leave a little bit of a dent in your cork. So let's put the machine back on to top stitching. And I will align my machine to the center and then I just tend to move my needles in that my needle so I can always follow the central seam. Uh, six, seven, oh, six, seven. Okay, let's draw down a bit. So I'm gonna pivot here. <laughs> the central um, seam sewn so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna add a rivet here and I'm going to then sew those two together let me see if I can I'm gonna have to move you back to my table but I'm gonna try and do it a much better way this time so that I don't make everybody sick I'll try and use something else just for the sake of the rivet Is there any frame? No, there isn't. Um, the only frame that you see. Yeah, I didn't think this was gonna work. Just bear with me. I think I should show you a little bit of my table. Um, the only, the fraying that you're seeing here is from the back fabric. There is absolutely no, um, there is, oh God, there is no fraying at all from the cork. It, it just doesn't. Um, but if, I'm going to try and remember before I finish this to talk to you about, uh, raw edges with cork. Because there is a way that you can also treat it because, after a while, if you are do a, a raw edged um, accessory, um, some of the the threads from the backing will start to fray. But there there are ways to um, there are ways to stop that. So uh, I'm going to quickly attach uh, a rivet to the top uh, because of the bulkness of the cork. I'm going to use a size nine shaft um, rivet. And one of the things that took me a little while to get used to, and it's important that you try and get used to it really quickly, is really manipulate the fabric. Don't be scared to make marks in it. So this is my wax canvas and I'm just going to fold it all the way down to get to the top of my pocket. Just don't, don't be scared. The same goes for cork. Don't be scared to to turn it and bend it and, and twist it if you have to. It's very um, malleable. So I'm putting the hole for my rivet. Thread. There we go. I'm going to attach my rivet and get my machine out. My press. I've got a teeny tiny press. I know that there's the, this big green one that uh, people have, which is fantastic, and I'm hoping to get it one day, but. I've got a tiny one with a tiny throat, so I have to fold my fabric. I have to, I've got no choice. There we go. 
That's one rivet pressed in. There. And the other one from the bag I made earlier. So again, I'm just twisting and turning my fabric so that I can fit it there. There we go. So let me see if I've missed any questions. There we go. Okay, so the next step is to attach the exterior. So I'll show you one side only because then I want to show you the strap um, rather than finish the um, the exterior of the bag. Draw a line, swivel there. Okay. So the important if you if you're doing the ring sling, the important part um, is to make sure that you match your pockets because they're going to be obviously very visible. Um, one tip, I can't remember who I picked it from, but I did, it's not my idea, but it works every time and it's brilliant. Especially if you do a lot of, um, if you're gonna use your cork for, as a contrast at the bottom of a bag or the bottom of a, or whatever. Um, it is just, you want to make sure that it's, it's completely aligned. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry, if you just bear with me. One of the tips, uh, the, I'm doing the ring sling by Mrs. H. That's that's the bag I'm making at the moment. So to make sure that your pockets align, again, trusted um, double-sided tape. Hope you can see it. I just place some within the seam allowance where my pockets start. Just, I don't know, 10 centimeters of it. Okay, there. Do the same for the other side when I do the other side. I don't know. I'll do it now, it's probably easy. Just line it up now. There we go. Okay. I just lost something. Um, and then I use this, uh, the double-sided tape to ensure that my pockets are aligned and they don't shift. And if I was doing a wax canvas pockets, I would be doing exactly, um, I would be doing exactly the same. So now, I hope you can see, now my pockets are aligned and they're not gonna move. can do them one at a time so yeah I'll just do one to show you so as she says in the pattern favor matching your pockets rather than um, the edges of the bag the, the top edges here don't really match but it's not the end of the world so we're gonna go and sew this now and then I will show you how to um, how to then top stitch it so I apologize again I'm taking you back to 
the sewing machine. Oopsie daisy. This should be the last time I make you move around so much. Okay. What weight is my thread? Oh, um, I don't know, I think it's ordinary. Do you know what, I couldn't tell you. It's just ordinary Gutemann bog standard thread, polyester. 100% polyester thread, but I don't know the weight, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. Right, so let's sew this. It's three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch. Let's put everything back in the middle. So I've got quite a lot of seams to get through here. So yeah, for this project, I would probably go with a jeans needle because that's very, very thick. quite catch you see let me just go back here for a second Now we want to, again, we can't press this seam open. So we're gonna have to use the um, the double-sided tape. Well, actually, I was gonna say, we're gonna have to use the double-sided tape. We can't use the double-sided tape because of the, um, the wax canvas um, and the double-sided tape is not gonna stick to it. So this is when we're gonna use the Fabri-Tac on the back to hold my seams down whilst I am gonna top stitch them. So we need to open the one that we, remember we, um, we use double-sided tape. So we open it up and we, up, we remove it. There we go, you can see that. stuck to my hands okay so I'm gonna try and use the fabric tack to hold my seam down just a little bit I hope you can see it just a little bit
and the irony is that it's holding it's holding the wax down but it's not holding the cotton down this time around i think the cork is just a little bit too thick so i'm gonna have to hold on to the cork this is when it can become a little bit tricky so let's go for a top stitching four So I'm gonna use my, my hand underneath to hold my seam open. It'd be better if I could start with my seam open. There we go. So hold my seam open. There we go. Okay. Again, I'm gonna line my walking foot to the central seam and move my needle to the side. So I've got a guide. I can feel the cork underneath and if I just slide my hand my finger against it it flat it holds it nice and flat on the side that I'm top stitching my finger is still holding it one of the things about cork that surprises people is that it almost feels like you're you're um, sewing through butter it is so soft going to be the trickier bit because it's very thick at this stage it's very very thick here I'm going to go rather gently Again, I'm going to use my hand to make sure that my seams are open. There we go. Okay. I'm just wondering whether I should. Do you know what? I'm not going to do it from this side because that's too big a jump for even, I think, for my machine. So I'm going to do the same thing from the other side but move my needle, rather than moving my needle to the right like I did, I'm gonna move my needle to the left. But I'd rather go down that little hill than up. and flat. That stretched mine a little bit, uh, probably 
well, that'll be my bag, but it did stretch my fabric a little bit. And because I used a white thread, you can see it, it wouldn't be so visible if I had used a blue thread on top, but it's back stitched to the hilt. So it's not really gonna go anywhere, but there you go. So that's the whole side of it. Uh, Stitch, and then you would do the other thing for the other side but obviously with that side already open it would be a little bit trickier but um but absolutely not impossible um impossible to do so that's how i would have that's how i would do um the exterior of the bag and it would look like that and it's kind of cool oh, you can see it there you go so uh now under the pressure of being watched. You have no idea how nervous I've been. Um, I've not even been able to have my dinner yet. I was so scared. Um, I've uh, I've been joking, I might as well say it, because I think I've said it to everybody. I've been joking that this is the first time in a year that I wear both bra and makeup at the same time. I think I haven't done that for uh, since March 2020. Um, okay, so very quickly, I have no idea what the time is. Um, if anybody can tell me how long I've been waffling on for. Um, I am going to show you the strap, which will mean that I'll show you, tell you about these, which I love. They're amazing. Um, and then if you have any, I think I've covered most things. If you have, oh my God, I've been talking for an hour. Um, if you have any questions, then just let me know. So let me. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. I keep moving you and I feel awful about it because I reckon you guys are going to be seasick by the end of it. Let me see if I can do it here. I'll just show you a fraction of it, but you can work out what the rest of it is. Right, so. Oh, yes, and I need to talk to you about raw edges on court. Let me just get some of my court straps. And show you. Oh, let's use this one. Okay. So I'm going to show you uh, how I do the um, how I do the strap with the wax canvas, and then I'll tell you um, I'll tell you about the um, the scraps. So I for for when I use um, webbing, I put some fray check on the end of it. Um, to stop it from, I only did one, so I'm gonna only show you one side, to stop it from fraying, obviously. And I also use my wax canvas as a, um, oh, I don't remember the word now in English, uh, a, a strap end, I think it's called a strap end. Uh, thank you for explaining. <laughs> uh, um, Patty, I'm not gonna show you the whole strap, um, because I'm slow and it will take forever, but I'll definitely show you the beginning and, and, and show you how my um, how my straps are. So I've, I know what length bag um, crossbody strap I need. So I've cut it this afternoon. And when, I can't remember off the top of my head right now, I, I, I didn't know earlier on, but what I try and do is I cut more of the wax canvas than the actual length of um, the strap because I'm gonna fold this over to cover this part. So here I've got my uh, I've got my wax canvas. So you can either fold it in the middle, which will give you your central mark, and then you just fold your edges in. Oh, sorry. Yes. So this is one point twenty five inches, and I really like for the 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 um the top part, the accent of my strapped strap. To be smaller so you can actually still see this webbing i really like that so i think i cut this one uh at uh one no i cut this one at two inches sorry because obviously i'm going to fold it in the middle so it'll end up being one inch wide so you can as i said you can either fold it in the middle and then you've got that central line and then you fold both edges in that works uh or you can just kind of eyeball it because it doesn't matter nobody's going to see um, nobody's going to see that part. So I think it's not the end of the world if it's not exactly it, but it avoids, if I, um, if it's, then it's faded, but it avoids seeing, I don't know if you can still see it ever so slightly, 
the central fold that I make. And further down here, there's no central fold, but you can't really tell the difference. So that's how I do it. So I would do it all the way along. And do you see how um, Wax Canvas has memory? So I can let it go and the fold, the fold stays, which is brilliant. Um, and you can just finger press it back into place when you need it. So I would do that to start with. I'm not gonna stitch that. Then I take my webbing. I fold this one once to hide my raw edge, like this. Okay. Qu'est-ce que j'ai fait, votre truc? I showed you a little box with lots of pins in it, and now I don't know what I've done with it. Sorry, bear with me. Well, never mind. I can't find... Oh, here it is. There you go. These, I got these on Amazon. I don't know what they're called. They're brilliant for working um, with straps. I love them. So I'm folding my... The edge of my wax canvas strap. Sorry, I'm tired. And when I'm tired, my English just goes out of the window. I completely forget how to speak in English. Um, so I fold it once and then I take my, my webbing strap, get the two raw edges to kind of meet, but, but with a, a tiny bit more space so that I can fold this one again, like that. Now, trust me, I've got that on the current bag that I'm using and it does not fray. This, these bits, they just don't fray. So I then, let me just pin that one with this, just so you can see. I'm gonna lower it because I would normally do it on, on a table. It's harder for me to do it just in the air. So with my strap, that my, cork, that my wax canvas, sorry, that has already been folded, I just lay it, eyeball it to center it, use these amazing things, and boom, it just holds it into place. And I can do a strap so quickly like that there so normally imagine that this has already been folded the whole length so you're not having to do this little extra bit that I'm doing as I'm trying to show it to you and then when you get to the other end when you get to the other end which is this one which I haven't fray checked so I'm not going to do it now you do exactly the same so then your ends are covered it looks I think it looks a little bit nicer and um and then you just, like any kind of contrast strap, you just sew it at an eighth of an inch along the top, sorry, you sew it at an eighth of an inch along the top, the wax canvas one side um, part, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then you, you just sew it all along uh, at um, top stitching length of, of three, and a, three and a half is quite nice. And that's your, um, that's your strap that matches the wax canvas of of the bag. Um, right, let me move on to, before I completely forget all my English and I start talking to you guys in French, which would be useless, let me talk to you quickly about, um, about the cork. Yeah. So if I just get all the things that I need to show you, how you would work with that. again sorry I'm thinking that I know how to do this after having done it so many times tonight I still get my sight's confused. Right. This is the last time I move you, I promise. Raw edges on cork. Um, I hope Mrs. H just forgives me, but I'm going to show you what I mean by that. And it's a, it's a pattern from 
from someone else. But cork is brilliant if you're going to make um, accessories, uh, wallets. Uh, all my wallets are made um, with cork, and they're they're beautiful. They're long. They're durable. Um, everybody in my family has cork wallets. My sons all have cork wallets, apart from the little one because he's only six. Um, my husband has. My my partner Richard has loads of cork wallets as well. Um, it, it makes a lovely durable um, uh, accessory and that's a really nice alternative to um, to leather. Uh, but what happens often with a cork wallet is that you're going to have raw edges like these because you, on, on something so small you don't want to have to fold your seams. So some of the best tips ever, again, I've learned everything I know thanks to sonar, is... If you're going to cut your cork and your seam is going to be visible, you don't need to see me, you need to see what I'm doing. If you're going to cut your cork and your seam is going to visi visi be visible, pardon, the first thing that you're going to want to do is burn it. Simple as that. So you, you grab your lighter and you just burn. And it gives you an idea of how non-flammable cork is because I can whoopsie daisy you can't see I can keep going over and over and over and over and it's absolutely fine it will scorch it after a while but it gets rid of any thread and say you've got a bag uh, or a wallet that's made of cork and it starts to fray after a while which might happen just, just kind of burn around the edges again um, another thing that um, you can add is this it's called fabric fusion um and I've, I've had it confused with other things so i've really written on it cork edges <laughs> because i've had it confused with uh with fray check before and um have i got anything that i can show you where i've done it no i'll just show you now All right i'm not taking you back to my sewing table so you're just gonna have to bear with me whilst i just sew these two bits together and uh, you can just look at the awful mess on my table bear with me so I've just sewn this flat to, to have a raw edge so that I can show it to you obviously I didn't do it straight so I'm gonna cut Cut it. Um, this is just me. I don't know whether other people do this, but I have a rotary cutter that I only use for cork and wax canvas and sometimes interfacing. And then I have a rotary cutter that I use for fabric and I never um, switch them over. Um, but I don't, I don't know whether I can, but I never cut my cork or my wax canvas with my good scissors and with my good rotary cutter. Uh, oh, okay. So I didn't cut this straight, so I'm just gonna cut it again. So you've got a nice edge. So you, this is your this is your seam uh, and, and your visible edge on, on the cork. I hope everybody can see it. This fantastic little thing called Fabric Fusion is a sort of a, a glue, but it's got a sheen to it. And you just apply it along the edge there. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. And then run your finger over it. I normally have a bit of a, a few scraps to wipe it clean, but yeah, there you go. I knew I had some little scraps. Let's just wipe off my hand. I normally have a little sponge that I can use. There you go, and then you let it dry, and what it does, it creates a, a thin layer of adhesive. I hope you can see a thin layer of adhesive, and it stops it fraying um, um, anymore, really. Um, and it, it is quite good. I know that a lot of people now are using Giardini. I think it's called the the proper edge coat. Um, I've got some somewhere. I've not had the courage to use it yet. Yet, um, but I think it's I think it's um, it gives a beautiful finish. Um, very very professional i don't know how easy it is to get now um i've heard a couple of people um say that it, it is taking a while to to reach us but i know that it's it's really nice so i think i've got a question 
sorry, I didn't understand. Will you pair it with some of the gorgeous Lewis and Ivor that you just got in stock? Is that for me? No, that's not for me. I have cork in stock, so we use cork. Oh, so, yeah, not those questions are not for me. Um, I think, I think that's it. Um, I can show you if you want some of the, I showed you my cork, I can show you the wax canvases that I've got to give you an idea of the colours that are, you're nattering in the comments, that's okay. I'll show you um, some of the wax canvases that I've got. Oh, and if anybody has any idea what to do with scraps of wax canvas, I've got a plan for my cork, but I've got this bag full of wax canvas scraps and I've got no idea what to do because I can't think of doing it as a patchwork and putting all these holes in it because I think sometimes I think it's going to affect the kind of water repellent effect, but I'm not sure, but I've got a ton of it. So I've got, this is the lovely green that they do. And again, with wax canvas, don't be afraid to scrunch it because that's when you get these beautiful lines that make it look all very timeless and, and, and rugged. Uh, I really like it. Uh, beautiful navy blue, which is the one I'm using for the bag. Again, when you scrunch it like this, you end up with um, beautiful veins of pale blue in the um, in the fabric of the, of the fabric, basically. Uh, Cheryl, wax canvas, I, I love using it for the exterior of a bag. Um, I think it just makes it look really, really nice and classy and t very, very timeless. And it's, it's also, whether it's for a, an accessory for a man or an accessory for a woman, it's, it's just really, it, it goes with, for everybody. Um, it, it's very, very, very nice. I like the structure of it. I like the feel of it um, as well. And you can get lots and lots of different colours. So this is the only, you know, at the beginning I was telling you about the oil wax canvas and the dry one. I prefer the oil skin, um, but you can get the dry skin and I've got uh, the, the dry wax canvas and I've got two of them here. But I've, I've just not really used them because I don't, I'm not a huge fan. So you've got beautiful magenta, but contrary to the other one, when I, when I fold it, you see what I mean? It will keep the creases, which is nice, but it won't, the, the colour won't, um, won't fade a little bit because of the wax. And I've got a, a nice big kind of mustard canary kind of yellow. So that's a different, the two different colours. It's much lighter, this one. But again, you wouldn't interface it either. So that's the lighter canvas. Yeah, I've got a ton of it. I've got, there's and lovely brown ones. Again, this is just lush. Um, oh, this one is, it's called Conquers. I've hardly got any of it left, I need to order more. And it looks like it's brown until when you crunch it, it goes red. Oh, we can't see it very well, but I promise you it's kind of got tints of, of, of well, it looks like a Conquers, tints of beautiful dark, deep, deep browns and reds. So that's absolutely lovely. Um, I, can, I can kind of talk about these for hours. I think I've got some more down here. There's black, gray, gray canvas. Again, you can really get to see the color. Look at that. That is just gorgeous. I love it. Uh, there is more. Believe me or not. Oh, one of my favourites. Oh, there's more green here. I do like green a lot. And then one of my absolute, absolute favourite is the red. This red is just splendid. And I've got little scraps of it again. When you crunch it, you just get these... Can you see it? You get these lovely lines, like veins. It's really fun. There you go. I think that's me. <laughs> I think that's me. Done. I didn't know I could talk about cork and wax canvas for that long. Uh, it doesn't rub off my clothes at all. It doesn't transfer. Um, that's why you also, also you don't need any interfacing. So I can 
I can make this. Um, I've got, um, I don't have it here. I have a, a, a red bag like this um, that I take with me and it's got a white end. It's got a white pocket with cherries on it because it matched that color and it's never leaked. There's never been any color transfer or any wax transfer or anything on it at all. So it's absolutely, um, it's absolutely brilliant for, um, for, but I think that's the, the same stuff that they use for, for making those barber jackets. So it just doesn't, it doesn't transfer on anything. Uh, yeah, 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 there's some beautiful wax canvas projects in the group. Um, there you go. Um, if you've got any questions, you can, you can ask them. Now I can hang around whilst I'm folding all my wax canvas back. Um, but I hope it helped. Um, I'm in the uh, British Bag Makers group. I'm in the uh, Mrs. H's group. So you can ask questions on, on, you can ask me questions on those. You can send me a message if you want to find out a little bit more. Um, ah, no, you can't wash it, Cheryl. They actually really advise you not to wash the wax canvas uh, because the wax will just come off. You can re-wax it, um, but once you've made it into a bag, I think it would be it'd be quite tedious to re-wax it. You can um, clean it with a damp cloth. It, it's it's not going to be very easy to stain. I would have thought. Um, I mean. As I said, I've had my bag for over a year. I haven't got a single stain on it, and I've got three kids and a dog. Um, but you, yeah, you don't put it in the machine. With regards to cork, I have heard of somebody who put a cork bag in the washing machine. It came back still looking like a bag, but I don't know how much it will affect this in kind of like the real integral structure of the bag. So I would say just like a, a, a damp cloth. Uh, I have washed um, spots off of cork bags with just a little bit of soap and water and, and it's come off. But I wouldn't put it all in a in a in a washing machine. No, I wouldn't. Um, that's it from me. I think I don't know. As I said I'll hang around a bit more to see if anybody has any question whilst I'm uh, I'm putting all of um, of this away. But my advice would be, you know, yes, it is a little bit expensive, um, but just if you can, just you know buy a color that you like in cork, buy a color that you like in, in wax canvas, make a project for you. I promise you're gonna love it. You're, you will love working with it. Um, and I, I just had a quick look on my machine and it's not going to my, my feed dog, but I've got a, only a tiny little bit of, um, of, of wax canvas at the moment. But as I said, with a toothbrush, it works absolutely, um, absolutely fine to remove anything and it doesn't gum up the, it doesn't gum up the needle, which is great. And voila! What are the best patterns to use it in? Uh, Cheryl, do you mean both or do you mean the which or one of them in particular? I'll just wait, I'll just wait for you. I think there's a, there's a tiny bit of a time delay. My pleasure. The wax canvas. Um, Jane, hi Jane. I use a, at the moment in my machine, it was actually a 12, uh, but they do recommend a 14, but I, I didn't have one. Jeans needle. <laughs> hi Emma. Um, thank you for coming on. Just to answer your question, Cheryl, um, you can pretty much do any bag, um, with wax canvas. Um, I would say a, a nice medium sized bag or a bag that you don't mind if it's slouchy. I love slouchy bags. I, I'm, I lately I've, I've just developed a real fondness of it. So not like a, a big stand up on its own bag, uh, with wax canvas because you'd have to use foam and I'm, I'm not sure that those two would marry very well because the whole point of wax canvas is that it, it morphs against your body and, and, it, and it moves nicely and fluidly um, to any kind of slouchy bag. I don't know if I can, if I can mention um, 
some of the bags. If you look on my Instagram, you'll see some of my, my wax canvas bags. But um, I've done um, Mrs. H is, I'm not going to pronounce this right, Quish, Quitch, Quitch, the CW1, uh, Quitch bag with um, wax canvas accents. Um, the... I'm sorry, my brain is fried. Um, I'd say, yeah, any any bag that would, for example, call for fleece would work for with wax canvas. The quick, the, yeah, but you're writing the name to me, Lizzie, and I doesn't mean I can pronounce it. The quitch, the cooch, cooch. Is that right? The cooch. We're gonna call it the cooch. Um, and that was lovely because it's a little bit of a slouchy bag and, and I love the bottom of that bag and I made that one with them. Um, both of the bottoms were wax canvas. Um, but I'd say, yeah, experiment. It's it's lovely to work with. It's fun and um, yeah, that's it really. <laughs> I'm staying there's still 18 people. So until everybody goes, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> so I'm just, uh... yes, I knew that it was a Welsh word for cuddle which I thought was really, really nice. Um, but it does, it does make for a lovely bag. Um, and as I said, I know that, well, I know for a fact because I've got that Merchant Mill do those um, sample cards. Fabric Fun House in America also do sample cards. So you can just order, pardon, you can order um, just um, some of the uh, the fabrics that they've got and see which colors you like and which textures you, um, you also like. I'm just gonna put these back under my table. It's very heavy. That's one thing, though, about wax canvas. It can be quite heavy when you've got a ton of it. Um, yeah. Oh, OK. I re didn't realize uh, people are going to watch for as long as I'm here. So <laughs> I'm going to go and have my dinner. Um, I hope it helped. Um, I can't wait to see what people are going to, um, are going to be making. I will finish my lovely, that I've just, I've got the other side to do. I will finish my lovely, uh, ring sling. I've got this back to do. And, um, I will post it as soon as it's finished. I just need to kind of rectify my thread stretching a little bit. Um, yeah, there you go. I hope, um, I hope it helped and I'm going to go and I'm going to have my dinner now. Um, au revoir. <laughs>